I'd now like to uh, bring in uh, Senator Dolan. Senator Connick and then Senator O'Donnell. So, Senator Donal, uh, Dolan. Gurmagos Cahirach. And first of all, thanks to the Minister team and the HSC and the team and for um, the answers that I got to the, the questions that I, that I put down. Um, I had four questions. The, the first thing I want to say is to commend the Department of Health. I think, sadly, you're the only department that I have seen so far that has mentioned uh, the, the uh, public sector duty uh, in relation to in, in your statement of strategy, and I think that's quite critical. And you have picked up on that as well in terms of the UN Convention and treating people with disabilities and mental health on an equal basis. And I do, I do want to underline that and appreciate that and um, their leads that could be well followed by other departments. And I'm sure Minister McGrath might be in a position to make that point to others as he's going along. Um, so look, the, my first question was to do with the, the, um, the, was in the context of a statement of strategy um, that the, 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 where, the, where it said that it would develop policies and proposals to promote community-based supports, including innovative enhanced housing options, and it asked uh, the, 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 um, what kind of policies were in place in that, and there's a pretty decent answer in relation to that. Where it leaves me, though, is um, lots of detail about processes and structures, but there's still almost 4,000 people with disabilities on the social housing waiting list for the last four years. And okay, people said, what's that got to do with health? The connection between people with disabilities, uh, that side of it has to, they're stuck in health, they're stuck in congregated settings, or there's 40 year old or 35 year old men and women living at home with their parents. Um, that's not acceptable. So there are those interlinking um, um, issues. Um, the congregated settings, and I note the comments that Minister McGrath has already made, um, they, there is still, if you get to 200 plus out this year, you're still talking, uh, the, the answer they, I got in relation to that talked about um, a third out by the end of the numbers that are in now, which is about 2,700, I think, off the top of my head, that a third of those will be moved by 2020. So there's another two thirds, nearly 900 still. Um, that doesn't seem to me like a priority being pushed on. It's something that keeps being in process. Um, and there are over a thousand people, as far as I understand, young people with disabilities under 65 in residential and nursing homes. And I relate that very strongly with the lack of supports um, for people in the community, the shaving away year after year after supports in, in, uh, of supports in the community. So they're my uh, comments in relation to that. I think there's a lot of ground, a huge amount of ground to be made up in actually getting beyond having processes and strategies and making things happen for people. I'll come back to the personal assistance in a moment because it's related to another uh, question and the Minister, Minister McGrath made, made some comments on it. My second question uh, related, related to, to um, fetal anticonvulsant uh, syndrome, uh, the facts forum, and um, the, the particular drug, um, the, er, the, 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 um, I'm going to mis mispronounce it now, um, Valparate, isn't that it? Yes. And um, the, uh, can the Minister H outline what has been done to enhance diagnostic process, standard operating procedures with the HSC, and please outline what's been done to improve patient safety warnings and adequate implementation of the European uh, Medical Agency's um, ruling of 2014. Look, uh, I, I want to be quite sensitive in talking about this because, uh, and measured, um, parents invest all of their emotion and all of their love in their children. There's no big deal about that. That is a fact. And they probably don't realise how much emotion and love they have until they have to deal with difficult issues. And this is one of these. We've mentioned already some other issues this afternoon. Um, they, they, yes, you have given a helpful response here. But for me, 
it is still short on, on things like good governance and good practice, or I'm not convinced that we have um, got to that point. I think it would be very useful at this stage, uh, Minister, if you were able to have a short meeting with the Facts Forum to actually get the ball rolling and to energise um, um, the, the, the people both in the Department of Health and the HSE to work with them. I, I see what your intent is here, but I'm not convinced, and I think as a public representative it's about being assured that there are good systems in place. And just making a reference, one of the, one of, one of the results, uh, one of the conditions that can be caused as a result of, of, of the prescribing of this um, for women who have epilepsy is actually neural tube, tube defects, quite a number of other things, but it's just a coincidence it's already been mentioned. Um, the response is very, it acknowledges very strongly in that first paragraph um, what's required that goes on and states that the HSE um, is aware of the issues. But I think then when we get on into the bullet points and particularly come on towards that final piece in terms of monitoring the effectiveness of the communications and follow-up, I feel the language there is so much could be urged, could be repeated, consideration of an opportunity to conduct such collaboration could. I'm not getting a sense of urgency. Maybe it's the way it's, the writ it's written, but I'm not getting a sense of urgency. And I want to say this. A child born today, and it's thanks to our health services, has 60, 70, 80, 90, and maybe 100 years of life ahead of them. For these children and others, that could be 100 years or 80 years of disability life years. It's 60 for their parents, give or take. So there's a lot, it's not like those codgers here who may have three, four or five years on average at the end of our lifespan. This is a big ticket item for a lot of people and to make sure that we can cut it off uh, as quickly as possible. The European, uh, the, the, the facts forum and um, would estimate that there could be over a 30 year period 270 to 360 children with developmental problems called by, by Valparais. 100 children with malformations at birth, such as neural tube defects, cleft palate, etc., etc. The the um, Department of Clinical Genetics in Our Ladies, Professor Andrew Green, has an a database that indicates that there are 43 children with this um, 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 diagnosis of facts at the moment. So, look, I could go on about this, but I think it would be really helpful to have a short meeting with this group and. They have a number, they've obviously parents involved in it, but there's organisations, a number of organisations who can practically help in start in moving on the messages, the toolkits and the whatever. So that, uh, that would be quite helpful if that, was, uh, if that was possible. I want to move on to the question of the, the, um, the personal assistance. Um, I had said before the last part of the few that, that personal assistance hours are particularly crucial to enabling people with disabilities to live independent lives, um, and yet there was no uh, and there was no explicit reference made to personal assistment, assistance in the statements of strategy. There were strong commitments made to independent living, which 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 I'm very uh, pleased to hear about, and the the the, the answer has laid out a number of things that aid um, that. Um, this brings me to, um, and in the information I was given, which is quite helpful, there's a division between um, the personal assistance hours and, and the home supports. And I'm really very pleased to see that because um, when I was a member of the Eastern Regional Health Authority 15 years ago, we were getting reports that just bundled everything. And I think now, but uh, Minister McGrath has just told us that there's 1.4 million PARs this year uh, for about 2,400 people, I think, if I'm correct. Now, your target last year was to provide 1.3 million. Your activity was 200,000 more than that. So let's be very clear. There's, uh, forgive my percentages here, but there's probably a 6 or a 7 percent less provision of PARs this year than was the outcome last year. 
on the basis that the target was 1.3 last year and the activity level was 1.5 million. Okay? That's in the question I have. And you find the same, different numbers, but basically the same outcome when, when you look at the home support hours. So that's saying to me that there's actually going to be less personal assistance hours provided this year than were provided last year. And someone please tell me what has changed to dampen the need for that, for, for that service. What that works out at, 2,400 people, uh, is, the, the, is less than 600 hours per person per week, which gives you two hours uh, um, um, a day. I'm saying that we're in a situation where there's very, very strong rationing of that service, extremely strong rationing of that service. And I know, and you know also, that there's significant unmet need. I came across a lady who passed away two years ago that I knew for many years. She had about, about 70 hours a week. They were sliced and diced to about seven or eight other people. Not saying that they didn't need them, but that was not, that is not the spirit of personal assistance. And until we get moving on that, I think we're going to have problems. Finally, the, the, the um, uh, vision for change, the mental health area, I had a very straightforward question there about um, um, funding. It's come to its, the end of its 10 years. It's been a, a, a difficult period. And again, there's probably more pressure around mental health and it's also a comorbidity issue for people with other conditions. So they're very serious uh, uh, matters and I, I, I mean I'm not happy with the response to that um, the, 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 uh, in terms of um, reassurance. The final thing that I, I might say has been mentioned already, the, the disability miscellaneous bill. And, um, I know the Minister is very keen to, and events have overtaken us, and it is frustrating in the last number of weeks. Um, but, Minister, you, you said to move it quickly to committee stage, a lot of the process will depend on you. That's the people of the, the, the committee here in the Houses. Well, I'm quite concerned that that bill has been published. Number one, it has dropped the word equality from its title, and I won't get too upset about that, other than when you stood up at second stage in the Dáil, you actually said there were a num you were going to deal with a number of issues at committee stage. Uh, your Dáil colleague Tommy Brohan said in his 25 years here that he had rarely, if ever, seen a bill introduced by government where they stood up at second stage and said, by the way, we're going to introduce a number of amendments at committee stage. There's a number of serious matters that nobody has had sight of and that will come in at committee stage. Now, but we, we aren't labouring that too much. I think for people with disabilities it's, beyond, it's gone beyond, and I say this with absolute respect, another commitment as to the timeline. Signing the convention was a promise that the state, an international promise that the state would ratify it. Ratifying is your solemn international promise that you'll get on your bike and, you'll and that you'll get the, on with the work. I totally accept, and I know this, I, I was meeting with my European colleagues from all across Europe over the weekend. I know we're well ahead of quite a number of European and other countries. And if there is an honesty to the Irish approach, what should be done now, and this is a matter not just for health but for government, come out and say now that you're going to put a decent cross-department budget package in place for the next budget. Um, there's a lot of issues, there's the employment, there's, there's health, there's social protection, whatever. That would give people confidence that it isn't a stalling tactic and that there is going, no, but it would, my point minister is this, it would give confidence that it isn't a stalling tactic. I'm not suggesting it is, but it would give confidence. People don't have that confidence now. And um, that would put Ireland back on its front foot and, um, and start to move things. Thank you very much, Cahir.